All right, we're back on video three of this 1988 BMW air conditioning, looking for a leak. And uh, look back at the other pr previous videos if you wanna see what happened then. So now I have the ultrasonic leak detector. In the video two, we went over the vacuum and pressurizing with dry nitrogen, not shop air. Do not use shop air. Um, I explained to you how the pressure decay test work. And so it's been seven minutes and 55 seconds and we dropped 1.2 PSI. So let's see what I found. I found, I went over it with the electronic leak detector so we didn't waste a lot of time with a long video. So let's go right to the leak. So I found one leak and this is one I could find so far. Check this out. Now watch that little indicator. When I talk, it'll move. This is sensitive to high frequencies of leaks under pressure or leaks under vacuum, including air leaks in your shop airline. So it'll throw you off, it'll drive you nuts looking for a leak on a car with a vacuum leak or, or a pressure leak when you have airlines in your shop leaking. Okay, let me shut up and you just watch the lights. Now, I have to tell you one more thing. If I bump this, it's really sensitive. Even if I bump the wire, it'll go off, watch. You see that? Now watch this. I bumped it. Bumped it. Okay, I have headphones on and I'm starting to hear something in my ears. Right there. Really, really loud in my ears right now. It sounds like an AM station on your radio hissing. Right there, there's a leak. There's a leak right there. So this picks it up. Now that's dry nitrogen using pressure to find a leak. We're gonna see if we can find that under vacuum too. Probably not because rubber hose pulls inward and with an oil film inside of it, seals itself. It'll probably go away under a vacuum. We know where the leak is. Let's do one other thing. Here's bubbles. I got some concentrated bubble soap. Let's pour it over that area. And it's too bad I, I keep forgetting to turn my light on. Let's just douse that whole area. All right, that's liquid bubbles. You don't see no, uh, or do we? Come on, Apple. There we go. There's a little bubble right there in the rubber hose. It's not coming in from the fitting. It's coming right there. Now, the way I got that was just by not using any refrigerant, just using pressure and coming and picking that up. Okay, you see that? And so basically you'll go across, even go across your own gauges, go across all your fittings 
always double check. Every time you're doing one of these procedures, double check all your connections, double check all your hoses, because you always want to know if your equipment's going to cause you trouble. So test it every time, and that's all part of your daily routine. All right, so we're going to jump to the next uh, thing. We don't know if the compressor is good. We don't know if the expansion valve is good. We don't know if the electrical controls are good. No, I'm not going to operate the system with nitrogen in there. That puts too much stress on the reed valves. Nitrogen was not meant to be compressed in a compressor. Nitrogen is way too much force and you can damage the reed. You won't break them. You'll just reduce and you'll distort them. You'll warp them and you can make it your compressor with more blow by more bleed by so i will not start this with dry nitrogen or shop air in it that is a no-go thing there guys go oh but i do it all the time and it works yes it works but you put a great amount of stress on the compressor and those thin little metal reed valves it was never designed to take the hard wrap of nitrogen and our air is made up of 78 percent nitrogen so don't do that uh, okay so i'm going to kill this I'm going to bleed out the nitrogen through the low side. So I'm going to close the low side because I'm using the nitrogen as part of a cleaning to reduce my moisture content. I'm going to open up the low side. We're going to turn off the nitrogen. We're going to disconnect it here. Ouch, that just blew my ears out. Let me kill this because the earphones are in my head and that little leak just blew my eardrums out. Okay, and then we're going to do this. So now the pressure is dropping on the low side, but I am not removing it from the high side. I'm letting it bleed through the high side, through the expansion valve, go through the evaporator, down the low side line, and out the low side hose, and out and down to the atmosphere. Open it up all the way. And then I'll turn my vacuum pump on. I'm gonna wait for the high side to go next to zero because vacuum pumps were not meant to compress pressure. Atmospheric, they were designed for, but they were not designed to be force fed more pressure than they were designed to take. So we'll wait for this to go down on the high side. I usually go down to like one PSI and then I start my vacuum. Okay, now I'm hitting one PSI. So now I'm gonna turn off my line I used for nitrogen. I am going to turn on the compressor. And have you noticed I don't use my switch because your switch has contact points and the more you turn it on and off, you wear it out. You ever have switches go out on your vacuum pumps if you use a lot? That's why you only use your plug. So now open up the low side or the vacuum and then start the process. We'll have the next video coming up next. And after that, we'll test the system with refrigerant and UV dye. We already found one link that was really easy to find. We're going to see if we find any more leaks.